Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today I'm coming to you from Eurobike in Frankfurt, Germany, where we are getting a first ride experience on the Fluid 3. I just saw the Fluid 2 upstairs, and we're going to look at both of these new e-bikes to see what makes them so special. Come along with us while we check it out. There's a lot to cover with the new Fuel Fluid 2 and 3. They're quite similar bikes, in fact they're nearly identical except for two things. The Fluid 2 has dual batteries for 2 kilowatt hours of capacity, while the Fluid 3 has a single 1 kilowatt hour battery, and the Fluid 3 is a step through. Other than that, basically identical. They both rock the new Valeo Cycli motor, which is a big part of what gives this bike such an impressive ride. First of all, it's powerful with 130 newton meters of torque. Watt ratings are always kind of a suggestion since they're often obscured for regulatory purposes, but peak rating on the motor varies between 750 to 1000 watts depending on who you ask. It's that torque though that really gives it the acceleration and hill climbing performance that most people are looking for, not to mention the class 3 speeds of 28 miles per hour in countries that allow it. But what's most innovative about this motor is the built-in gearbox with automatic electric shifting. That means when you put the fluid in predictive mode, it rides the same way an automatic car drives, i.e. you don't think about or do anything other than operate the pedals and steer, or in the case of the North American model here, potentially operate the throttle as well. With predictive shifting, it always downshifts when you come to a stop, then it begins upshifting as you pick up speed again. In my opinion, it let my cadence get up a bit higher than I'd prefer before it upshifts, but that's just me. And if you want, you can just click it into manual mode and then you've got complete control of the shift points, just like with a regular derailleur or internally geared hub, except that it's also electric shifting, so you never need to worry about shifter cables. Also, there's no heavy internally geared rear hub, since the transmission is in the motor housing itself at the center of the bike. That also allows this belt drive bike to have actual gears, even with the single speed hub in back. Then consider the battery life. Even the smaller of the two options, the Fluid 3 here, has a thousand watt hours of capacity. That's enough for a hundred miles of range on pedal assist if you're keeping it easy, or a solid 60 miles of range on full power pedal assist. And even if you use the throttle, you're going to get a worst case scenario range of at least 30 miles. Now the Fluid 2 with double the battery, just double all those numbers. That's up to 200 miles in ideal conditions and 60 miles in worst case scenario conditions. The worst range on the Fluid 2 is equal to the best range on most other e-bikes. So basically, this bike is overbuilt, which makes sense, because it's designed by legendary motorcycle maker Eric Buell. He approached this as he would a motorcycle, not a bicycle, and thus overbuilt it so that it would serve the role of a vehicle, a true car replacer. That meant having to design most of the bike from the ground up, including parts like those batteries being developed in-house. Then there are all the other components and features, like the built-in GPS anti-theft tracking, powerful hydraulic disc brakes, the gate's carbon belt drive, the close tolerance fenders, high quality rack, bright LED lighting, and even including parts like mirrors as standard equipment, since this is basically a bulletproof commuter e-bike designed for people who actually commute on their bike each and every day. Now does it have some downsides? Sure. To me the motor's a bit loud with that gearbox winding up. At first it bothered me more, but I grew accustomed to it and it was kind of nice to hear that motor wind up, at least in this urban setting. If you're riding on a nature trail, it probably sounds louder than it needs to. But most people aren't getting this type of bike for a Sunday nature trail ride. You're getting it to keep up with traffic and rely on it for hard daily riding. And in that case, the motor's unique signature might even be nice for some riders as one more form of sensory feedback. At a $5,495 starting price, this is definitely not a cheap bike. But then again, it wasn't designed to be. There are plenty of e-bikes in the $5,000 to $10,000 range that use high-end parts combined with more robust designs. For riders looking for those types of bikes, I can tell you that you'll find the Fluid 2 and Fluid 3 deliver serious performance and a comfortable ride, complete with all the features you'd want in a car-replacing bike. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that first ride on the Fluid 3 electric bike. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.